welcome, I'm Miss Kate with Paint It Kids and today we will be drawing and painting adorable mom and me llamas. Before we get started, let's get a few things ready first. If you are painting with us today, you may wanna lay down some newspaper or an old tablecloth underneath your canvases just to protect your work surface. We will also need a canvas for each member of your family that's painting with us today, along with pencils, Sharpies, erasers, and I like to have an assortment of paint brushes usually. Um, I usually like to have at least a big flat brush for our backgrounds and then a smaller detail brush, but use what you have. We will also need a paper towel to wipe off our brushes between colors, and if you would like to use a water cup to wash your brushes between colors, that is fine as well. We also need a paper plate to put our paint on, and I always use the primary colors red, yellow, and blue along with white and black. If you do not have the supplies to paint with us today, please work with us on paper. You can use crayons and markers, whatever you have, so you don't need to paint. If you don't have canvas and paint at home, just draw along using what supplies you have. At the end of today's lesson, if you would like to use the hashtag CWE Paint With Me or tag our Paint It Kids social media sites, we are on Instagram and Facebook, that would be fantastic. We would love to see what you paint with us today. Let's get started. So to start, I want to make sure that we have our two canvases, or some of you guys might be painting with three or four um, people in your family. So make sure your canvases are kind of close together so that we can tell the height of each llama. So the tallest person in your family that's painting with us today may be your mom. Um, we are going to make her llama first. So to start her llama, so the mom llama, the tallest llama in the family that's painting today, we're gonna start with our pencil on our canvas and we are gonna draw, like it's like a really big, tall, skinny, it's like almost like, like a rainbow shape, like an upside down U, like this. But we want to make sure we leave enough room for ears because llamas have these tall, sticky, uppy kind of ears at the tops of their heads. So we wanna make sure we leave um, at least a little bit of space at the top of our canvas for those ears later. So now we've got our mom, our mom llama about this high on our canvas. So whoever is the next tallest in your family that's painting with us today, we wanna to make sure they're not quite as tall as mommy llama. So we wanna make sure maybe they get a little bit shorter. So over here I'm gonna draw like a kid llama. And I'm not gonna make this like a super baby llama. Maybe this is like, like, a, like a second grade llama. Like, like this maybe, about this tall compared to mom. So it's the same kind of shape, but we're making sure that this one is a little bit smaller than the mama llama. All right, now let's say we had another person in our family painting today and that person was maybe a kindergartner. Well then that might be a teeny tiny llama, like maybe even smaller than this llama. All right, after we have these basic shapes, we're gonna go ahead and start on the ears. So llama's ears, they're kind of like bunny ears. So like they stick up, so I'm gonna start with mama. All right, so she's gonna have these like sticky uppy ears. Try and think like I have a German Shepherd and like their ears are kind of like this too. They kind of like stick up a little bit. They're maybe not quite as long as bunny ears, but they're pretty They're pretty tall and they stick up. So there, there's mama's ears. Um, I also, whenever I'm doing like fluffy animals, I always like to put these like pinky middles like this. So I do just like an extra little line like this. So now we've got these two ears that stick up on mom. I'm gonna go ahead and do babies too. So you guys get your ears on. And again, they're not like huge ears. I mean, they're bigger than cat ears, but they're, but they definitely stick up. Okay, so we've got one ear. We need one more ear on our little kid llama. And if they're a little crooked, like one's a little taller than the other, that's fine. There we go. All right, so we've got these ears on our llamas. One thing I do like to do, and I'm gonna to try to draw this a little bit darker so that you guys can see what I'm doing here, but sometimes I'll take my eraser and I'll erase just these tiny little lines in between like the pinky part of the ear um, in the side of the ear like this. I'll try to make it a little darker so you guys can see what I'm doing. 
but I'm erasing just these, just this little line in between the pink part of the ear and the side of the ear. So like it's all just like one shape. Let me get this eraser dust out of there. All right. So it's kind of like this. Oh, hopefully that helps you guys see it a little better. Okay. All right. So you see, I just kind of erased like in between here. Okay, so in these little spots. Um, okay, so we've got like the basic outlines of the llamas. The llamas have like really long necks. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do, and this looks a little silly, but we're gonna put like a giant egg on their faces. So it's like, it's just like a big egg shape like this on mommy's face and on the kid's face. These eggs are gonna be the house for the nose and mouth for our llama. So for the nose, I like to do like an upside down kind of triangle shape. I know some of my friends like to do with llamas, they don't like to do the triangle. Sometimes they'll do like a heart or an oval. That's fine too. You just make sure your llama has a nose. So I do, I do for my llamas, I always do like these upside down triangles like this. And then I draw a little line hanging down from the triangle like this, just like that. And then I always call this my swoopy whoopy mouth. So once we have that line hanging down, we're gonna kind of swoop to the left, swoop to the right, just like that. That's gonna be their mouth. Looks like they're smiling now. I know some of my friends like to have their little tongues hanging out. You can add that if you want to. Now the other thing, so once we've got like our little egg shape, we've got our nose and mouth inside there, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the llama's eyes. So llamas have these really big eyes and they have these really long eyelashes, so they have super fun eyes. So the eyes of llamas, I always like to start with a curve up, so it's like a big curve kind of to the side, it almost looks like laughing eyes. So you guys look at those like laughing emojis, they kind of have eyes like this. It's like that, just like a curve. So we're gonna do kind of like this, this like curved eye like this, and they're really big. So I want them to be big eyes. So we're gonna have these like really big curves to the left and to the right of the egg shape. After you have that first curve, now we're gonna do a curve down. So it's gonna turn it into kind of like a football shape or like a, like a lemon or an almond. So we're gonna just do like a curve down and a curve down like this. And then I always like to put sparkles in my cute animal's eyes. So I always add like at least like one sparkle. Sometimes I'll get like fancy and do like a couple sparkles. Like you can do a couple sparkles if you want. Um, so I just put like a couple sparkles. I just think it looks cute. And if you guys want to, you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to like kind of shade in the eye, I mean, we're gonna paint these black later, but sometimes I like to look at it like this with it kind of shaded in, it looks better. So I might shade in with my pencil a little bit. Like that. And then one thing we can't forget is we gotta add those long eyelashes. Llamas have these beautiful long eyelashes and they usually kinda go out to the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda like do at least one curl. Sometimes I'll do two eyelashes like this. Like one, two. Now if you really don't wanna put eyelashes on your llama, you don't have to. But they actually in real life have these really awesome eyelashes. They have like curly eyelashes. Long eyelashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on my llamas just like that. And then actually, the rest of this is pretty easy because now we're on to like accessories. This is what the llamas kind of look like. I mean, they're a little fluffy. So if you guys want to kind of like, like get, make them a little fluffy on the sides, you are more than welcome to look like, you know, just to make your straight lines a little fluffy like this. So, I mean, I'm not gonna make them like crazy fluffy, but just like kind of like a little fluff here and there like that. And then uh, the accessories is my favorite part. Okay, so we're to accessories. And um, when you look up like pictures of like llamas or llama art or llama designs or llama stickers or llama pajama pants or whatever you wanna look up with llamas, a lot of times, I don't know why they do this, but they put these little necklaces, these like pom-pom necklaces on them. So sometimes with llamas, I like to do these like, they're kind of like strings that just kind of like go around their necks like this. And they have these little like, like poof, poof balls, like these little like, like, I don't know what they are. They're like little pom-poms. And they have these on their necklaces. And I don't know why llamas are always wearing these pom-pom necklaces, but if you look up pictures of llamas, like a lot of times they'll have these, these cute little like necklaces with these little circles on them. So uh, this is a fun way to like 
add in extra colors too to your llama art. So, um, I mean, if you didn't want to do this, you could put like a bow tie or you could put a scarf or something on your llama's neck. But I usually like to do these little like necklaces. So I'm gonna do one on this little, this little llama too. Little llama's gonna have his, his own necklace. All right, so here I've got, couple more of these little circles. And again, this is totally optional. You do not have to do the little pom-pom necklace if you don't want to. I just think it's cute, so I like to add like a little extra something. Another place you can add a little extra something is on top of their heads. So a lot of my friends will put like a top hat on top of their head, or a party hat, or a tiara, or a bow. I personally like to do a flower. So, like especially at mom's. Like I think mom needs a flower. So I'm gonna put like, like maybe like a really pretty like big flower like this. But again, guys, this is like super optional. You don't have to do this. Um, some of my favorite llama paintings that I've done actually have like a flower crown. So like I have flowers that go all the way across her head. So it's just like she's got like a crown made out of flowers. So you could do that. Um, but again, it could be like a baseball cap. Maybe it has your like favorite sports team or something on the on the hat. Um, you can put anything you want on their head, or you could just leave it plain like this one. He doesn't have to have anything. At this point, once you get your accessories on there, again, they could be anything you want. You can put anything on their head, you can put anything around their neck. Then we are ready for Sharpie. So once we're done with our sketch, we've got our Sharpie. Um, I do like to Sharpie every line that we put on here. Um, and the reason I do this is it gives us a nice outline for our paintings. So um, it's just, it gives us like a nice, it's almost like, you know, when you have like a coloring page, it gives us like a nice clean outline for everything and then we just fill it in with paint. So um, you guys, we can pause this video at any time because I know we all like work at different speeds and I am pretty fast when it comes to sharpening and painting so please feel free to pause this video at any time if you need um, some time to catch up and then just restart it when you're ready. Now after you've sharpied everything, and as you can see, I kind of like shaded in my eyes because I know I want those to be black, and I'm gonna paint them black later, but sometimes, again, I kind of like to see them shaded in. So I went ahead and used my Sharpie to color in the eyes. I didn't color in the nose. You could, because the nose can be black, but sometimes with llamas, I like to make their noses pink. So I just left that open. Um, another thing, when you're done sharpening, you might notice that you have some smudges on your canvas. So this is a good time, I mean, after your Sharpie, give your Sharpie like a minute to dry a little bit just so it doesn't smudge. And then you can, you can take your eraser and you can just clean up any smudges that you might have or stray pencil lines. And even if it doesn't take all the smudges and stray pencil lines off, it'll. it's nice to get like kind of like a clean start on here. We have like a really bright, clean canvas before we start painting. So I just like to give them just a once over and then get that eraser dust off of there. Try to, there's a lot of dust. Okay, so mom's clean. I think the baby's had enough time to dry, so should be able to yep, get some of these smudges out of the way. All right, so I think think, yeah, we're pretty good. Okay, nice, clean, oh, there's a little smudge there, okay. Nice, clean llamas, we are ready for paint. So again, guys, I always like to use two brushes. I like to use like a big flat brush and a small pointed brush like this. If you don't have both brushes, you can do this all with one brush, it's no problem. Um, okay, again, paint. I like to have the primary colors red, yellow, and blue. I also like to have white to make my colors lighter and black for the end. Sometimes with black, I don't even put it on my plate until the end because I never use it until the last step because it, it can turn your colors to mud. If you mess up with black, it, it get everything gets really muddy and really dark, so sometimes I don't even put that on my plate until I need it at the end. But to get started, I'm actually gonna start with my background color. So my background, I'm gonna make it my favorite shade of blue, which is kind of like a light kind of blue aqua color. You guys could do a different shade if you want. One thing I do like to do though is on one of your palettes, because everyone in your family that's painting today probably has their own paint palette, 
But for the backgrounds, it's kind of nice when your backgrounds match. So you might want to just make a huge batch of whatever your background color is, and then everyone can share that same color so that your backgrounds match perfectly. So my favorite color for my llama's background, because I've done this painting so many times and I always go back to this like kind of like light blue aqua color. It's a lot of white. So I'm gonna do like a lot of white, like a lot, a lot of white. And then I'm gonna take some blue. And this makes a light blue. This would be beautiful for your background too. But I actually like to add a little bit of yellow. Not so much yellow that it turns green, but it just, as you can see, it just kind of turns it into this like aqua color. It's really pretty. But again, if you guys wanted to do a pink background, it could be red and white. If you wanted to do a yellow background, that's fine. You guys really can do this any color you want. But again, if you want your backgrounds to match, it's probably nice to take one of your plates and make a huge pile, just like I did, like a big pile of one color, whatever color you want. And then you guys can go ahead and start painting your background. Now I have a big flat brush. If you guys have a big flat brush like this, this is such a good one to use on your background because the background's really big on this. And um, if, you, if you use a little brush for this part, it might take you a while, which it's probably gonna take me a while anyway because this background is so big. And I have two to paint, so I have to take my, paint mom's background and baby's background. So um, I'm gonna just keep working with my big flat brush on this background. If you guys are a little nervous, now I've been painting for a long time, but if you guys are a little nervous about getting around some of these little details, um, then you might want to switch to your, one of your little brushes if you have a little brush. Um, but I'm I'm pretty good, and even if I see, like I like hit my llama a little bit, that's no big deal. That's no big deal. I will put that, that llama's fur on right there again when we get to llama color. So I'm just, oh, another thing. Okay, so you have these eyelashes, right? This paint is actually pretty thin. So as long as I don't have big gobs of paint, see how I'm like painting the background, but I can still see my eyelashes. I'm gonna put those back on with black paint later. So you guys don't have to worry about little stuff like that. If you accidentally hit your llama a little bit, you go over your eyelashes, that's not gonna matter. So we're just gonna do the best we can. We're gonna put this, this background on all of our canvases so every canvas has a nice, beautiful um, colored background. And again, this is a good time for you guys to pause the video and just work at your own speed because I am, again, I'm, I'm pretty fast with this stuff because I've been painting a long time. So this is in a race. Please take your time um, and give this video a pause and then just hit play again when you are done with your background and you're ready to get started on your llama. All right, after you guys are done with your backgrounds, you're definitely going to want to wipe off your brush and get that background color off your brush. If you are using a water cup, you can rinse off your brush in your water cup and then just make sure you dry it off under paper towel because we don't want to work with wet brushes with acrylic paint on canvas. So you always want to make sure you have a clean, dry brush. I typically don't use a water cup, so you don't have to. You can if you want to get your brush really clean. I think I'm pretty good just wiping it off on a paper towel like this until I'm not getting a whole lot of paint off. So I, I think my brush is pretty clean now. All right, so we've got our background color now. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna work on our llama color. So llamas are mostly white. I mean, I would call their fur kind of like white, but I do like to add a little bit of yellow to it just to make it a little creamy. So what I do is I take like a big scoop of white, like this, and then I'll just add like the tiniest tap of yellow, like hardly any yellow at all. And it turns into this beautiful like buttered popcorn color, kind of like a vanilla color. It's just like, it's like slightly yellow. It's mostly white, just a little creamy. So we're gonna take this color and we are gonna paint our llama's fur. So there's a couple things in here. And guys, again, if you have these necklaces, don't worry. I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but when I'm going over these strings, I'm trying not to color the pom-poms maybe, and I'm not coloring the snout, uh, like this like egg shape. But if you guys go over the strings, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I can still see them just fine through the paint. I'm gonna put these all back on later with black. So I am not concerned about going over these little details with my creamy color. 
So we're gonna go ahead and try to get like around all these little pom-poms. And I'm using a big brush, but guys, I, some of you guys, definitely, if you had a lot more details than I did, because I don't have a whole lot of pom-poms, you will definitely want to use one of your smaller brushes. Like if you have a brush that's like small and pointed, that's a lot easier to get around some of these things without making a mistake. So uh, we're gonna try to get all our llama's fur painted with this like pale creamy yellow color like this. Um, I'm not gonna paint the eyes, the eyes are gonna be black. If you actually get some of the eye, that's no big deal. I'm gonna try not to paint the snout, this egg shape here. If you accidentally do, no big deal. This is why we Sharpie, we can see everything through this very light color. So we can put it back on later, it's no big deal. Like I just hit my snout a little bit there, it's no big deal, you don't have to worry about that. Another thing that we're gonna paint with this, this creamy color is we're actually going to paint and feel free to, especially with it, depending on how thin your, your ears are here, you might want to switch to this little brush. Um, I might even actually switch this little brush now because it gets pretty thin in here and you're going to want to get the outside of the ears. Now, the inside of these ears are going to be pink, but the outside of the ears are going to be the llama color. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this real skinny brush here and get the outside of these ears put, put on here like this. Okay, so we've got, let me get this one too. And you guys are just gonna keep working until all your llama's fur is colored this creamy color. And then after you've got the creamy color done, then uh, we will be ready for our accessories, which that's a fun part because we get to mix our own colors and make our accessories whatever colors we want. So um, I'm gonna continue painting these llamas with this creamy, kind of like butter popcorn color, um, vanilla color, and you guys just hit pause. And then when you are done with your llamas, hit play again, and we will be ready for the color mixing for all of our fun accessories. All right, so I've got my creamy yellow color um, fur on both my llamas here. So um, again, make sure you got this creamy yellow color on the outside of the ears. Um, sometimes I forget that, like I'll color the whole llama and at the end I'm like, oh, I forgot the outside of the ears. So make sure you get the outside of the ears. The inside is gonna be pink and I'm actually gonna paint that now. But before I switch to another color, you always, always, always have to wipe off your brushes on your paper towel. Again, if you've got a water cup, you can rinse them off first if you want and then wipe them off on your paper towel. But always make sure you have a clean, dry brush before starting with a new color. So the next color I'm gonna make is actually gonna be pink and that's gonna be for the middle of our ears. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little brush because the inside of these ears are really small. So I, I don't wanna use my big flat brush for like a little spot like that. So I'm gonna use one of my little brushes and I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna take some red and I'm gonna mix them up and we are gonna get this like beautiful pink color just like that. And then with this pink, there's a couple things I like to do with it. So definitely put the inside of our ears on for sure. We do like those little pinky middles like this. And mine's a pretty bright pink. You guys, if you don't want your pink to be so bright, you can add more white. Mine is like hot pink. It is like a really bright, beautiful pink. But you guys can have a lighter pink if you don't want this bright pink, that is fine. Another thing that I like to do, and again, you guys don't have to do your nose pink, but I do like to make my, my llama noses pink. I don't know what color llama's noses actually are. They're probably like black or brown. Um, but I really like to do, um, I really like to do my llama's noses pink. Okay, so if you want a pink nose on your llama, you are welcome to do that like that. Um, another thing that sometimes some of my friends like to do with pink is they like to do these like rosy cheeks. So again, super optional. You do not have to do little rosy cheeks on your llama. Okay, if you think that's not your thing, you don't do it. You don't have to. But you do have to paint like these, the middle of the ears. Those I, are all furry animals. Like if I'm doing bunnies or if I'm doing cats or I'm doing dogs, any kind of furry animal, I usually like to do the middle of their ears pink. So I am gonna paint these pink like this. And again, the nose can be black later. Well, I'm not working on black until the end. I always save that for the end. 
But um, if you want to have a pink nose, you can. Put your little pink nose on there. And rosy cheeks if you want. All right, so I've got my pink done. So now I'm gonna wipe off my brush again because this is the fun part. This is where we're gonna mix our own colors to make all the different accessories. So you guys might have these pom-pom necklaces like I have, or you might have a scarf, you might have a top hat, you might have a birthday hat, you might have flowers. And I want you guys to be able to choose whatever color you want for those things. So I'm wiping off my brush and my paper towel, which I always do in between colors. And um, we're just gonna go in rainbow order here. So I can teach you guys how to make all the colors. So we're gonna start with the first color of the rainbow, which is red. We already have it, it's a primary color. If you want something to be red, just paint it red. So I might want the middle of this flower to be red, or maybe I want some of my pom-poms to be red, my pom-pom necklace. So I'm gonna like, maybe just a couple here and there. So anything you guys want red, just paint it red. Maybe here. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so after you guys are done with the red in between colors, I always wipe off my brush a little bit. And we're gonna move to the second color of the rainbow. So the next color I'm gonna do is orange. So we've got red, so we're moving to orange. To make orange, I'm gonna take a scoop of yellow like this, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of red into it. If you put too much red into yellow, it'll turn into like a red-orange, because red is a really bright color, and yellow is pretty light. So I, I use a lot of yellow and a little bit of red to make this shade of orange. So it's a big scoop of yellow and a little, little scoop of red. And it'll make this beautiful kind of like pumpkin color. And then if there's anything that you want to paint orange, you guys can paint something orange. So there might be some of these colors that you don't like. Say, I don't like orange. Well then, you don't need to paint anything orange. I just wanna teach you guys how to make all the colors and then you guys get to choose what colors you wanna use for your accessories. So after orange, just like with after red, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my brush and my paper towel. And it doesn't have to be all the way clean. I just like to get like the big globs off of there. All right, so we've already done red, orange. Next color of the rainbow is yellow. Yellow is a primary color, we already have it. It's right here on our plate, so that's easy. So if we wanna make something yellow, like say I wanna make like these flower petals yellow. That's nice. And you guys can paint something yellow. Some of you guys might have um, some pom-poms that you might wanna make yellow, and you can do that. But we're actually halfway through the rainbow colors now. We're halfway through the color wheel. So we've done all the warm colors, red, orange, and yellow. So just a couple more. Okay, I gotta make some of these pom-poms yellow. All right, let's see, maybe just a couple here. All right, that's good. All right, so I've got my yellow done, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my brush again. A lot of cleaning of our brushes. All right, so we've done red, we've done orange, we've done yellow. The next color of the rainbow is gonna be green. To make green, I just take a scoop of yellow and a scoop of blue and I mix them together. And there you got it, you got green. Like that. And you notice my plate's getting really crowded. I actually like to use the same plate through the whole time and I get this, this plate will be a work of art at the end. Um, if your plate gets so crowded, you can't make any more colors, you might need to take, an, you might not need, need another plate. Um, so feel free to start on another plate if you run out of room on this one. All right, so I've got my green, blue, and yellow and I'm gonna go ahead and make some of these pom-poms green. Maybe this one. one more. I do like green, so I'm gonna use a lot of green. Okay, so green, maybe I'll do. Okay, all right there, so I've got some green, so now I'm gonna wipe off my brush. So we've done red, orange, yellow, and green. Next color of the rainbow is blue, and again, it's a primary color. We already have it, it's right here on our palette. So blue's easy, you just, Go ahead, and if you want something to be blue, fill it in. So I've got my blue on here. And let's see, we'll do something here. Maybe some here. Hmm. Where else? I do like blue, so maybe one more. 
Okay. All right, once you're done with blue, you're gonna wipe off your brush again. And again, guys, if I am working too fast with the colors here, just pause the video. You guys can start again when you're ready. All right, so we've done every color of the rainbow except for purple. So we need our purple. And to make purple, purple's a little tricky sometimes. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. What I mean. All right, so if I take, okay, so purple is red and blue. I take some red and then I take a little bit of blue and I mix them up. And look what happens, it turns so dark. I don't know if it shows up on the video, um, but when you mix red and blue together, it turns into a really, really dark purple, like a eggplant purple, like really, really, really dark. Um, typically, I like to add at least a little bit of white to my purple, and you'll see why. It just lightens it up a little bit, and this is, when I think of the color purple, I think like this color. So if you guys don't like the really, really dark purple with red and blue, just add a little white to it. It'll lighten it up just a bit. All right, so now I've got this this purple. It's still pretty dark, but it just it looks a little more purple to me and less like black. So I'm gonna paint the rest of my little pom poms with this purple. And then there's so many of these pom poms. I have to make sure I got them all, but I think I did. I think I got them all. All right, so when you're done with all of your accessories, and you guys might have more going on on your llamas than, than I do. You might have fancier hats or more decorations. So this, might, this part might take you longer than it's taken me. So again, feel free to pause. But when you are done with all your accessories, you're gonna wanna clean off your brushes, any brushes that you were using, and then we will be ready for gray. So to make gray, gray is white and black, but white is a very light color and black is a really strong dark color. So when I'm making gray, it's gonna be for like around the mouth and nose here. I want it to be a really light gray. So what I do usually when I'm making a really light gray is I start with a bunch of white. So I'm gonna kind of like scoop a bunch of white over here and then I'm just gonna take a teeny tap of black, like not very much at all. And I'm gonna stir it up and you'll see it turns into a very, very, very light gray. So I don't like to use very much black at all. I'll take like a huge pile of white and I'll just put, like you saw, I just like did like a teeny little tap, like just a tap of black and add it to my big pile of white and then I get this beautiful light gray. All right, so this light gray, I'm gonna go ahead and use this for around my llama's nose and mouth and again, if you guys cover up some of these lines, you're still gonna be able to see them. And that's, that's why I Sharpie, that's why I Sharpie, because then you guys don't lose your sketch. You can still see through, the, through this paint, even if you make a mistake. If you cover up some of these Sharpie lines, don't worry about it. You're still gonna be able to see them through this very light gray. All right, so I'm putting on our little, our eggs, our snouts, like this. Now baby needs his. All right, so baby llama needs some gray. All right, and there's another fun little thing. It's an extra, but I'll show you another thing sometimes I like to do with light gray, and it, it, it's, you don't have to do it, but sometimes I like to put like little like tufts of fur in gray. Um, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. And this is extra. If you don't like the way it looks, don't do it. But sometimes with this really light gray, I will take just a little bit like on the tip of my brush, like a little of this light gray, and I'll just kind of do like these little like, like brush strokes. I don't know if it, how well this shows up because it's a really soft color, so it may not show up so well on the camera, but I think you guys might be able to see at least what I'm, what I'm trying to do here. You can do just like little highlights almost, with I guess little shadows in the fur, and I don't do a lot. Like it just, just like here and there, just kind of makes them look like a little extra fluffy because llamas are super fluffy. Like they've got all this, like all this hair. And so I, I sometimes like to put just like a little of this fluff on there. Just a little bit. Here and there, little fluffs. Little, little gray, light gray fluff. Not a lot, and I usually don't do it all over. I just kind of like highlight the edges of their body and the edges of their face. I don't like do this like zigzags all over their face. Um, I typically just do like a little bit. It's like just like a little hair here and there. It's not, not anything crazy. Um, if you don't like the way that looks, then don't add the, the light gray fluff. You don't have to, but definitely like paint in the snout here. 
When you are done that, with that, we are getting so close in. We're getting to like the, the fun part. So um, one thing that I do like to do with these, especially if you have a lot of empty space in your backgrounds around your llamas, is sometimes I like to do like polka dots or confetti. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my brush that I cleaned off and you guys can like, do little like Fruit Loops or little polka dots. They can be like any color that you want. So you guys can like add on these fun little like like shapes and it fills in this background and just makes it like more interesting. So again, you guys don't have to do this. Some of my friends will like literally put like rainbow confetti. They'll take every color and do little brush strokes in the sky and it looks like the llamas like are having a party and they just threw confetti all over. So, I mean, you guys, you don't have to do this. Some people will do stripes. Some people do stripes in the background um, or stars or sometimes they'll put like a heart, like they'll put like a heart on the mom's uh, background and a heart on the baby's background because you know, oh, they, you know, they love each other. So you might, you might, so if you guys want to add something fun, like something extra to the background, you can, you don't have to, but again, sometimes like, especially if you have a lot of empty space, I like to fill that in with some kind of decoration or something. So I'm just, I'm keeping mine really simple. I'm just doing these like white loops. They almost look like little bubbles or something, <laughs> but I think, I think it's cute. I think this, I think this works really well. I think this looks really good with the, with the canvas. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep making these little, these little loops here and there. But again, it could be anything. You guys don't have to do this. You can do whatever you want. And then um, at this point, if you guys don't already have black on your plate, you are probably gonna wanna add some black to your plate because that is going to be our last step. So I always, again, save black for the very end. This black can be a little bit messy. Um, so I don't, I don't ever do it until, until I absolutely have to, which is the very end. And everything's kind of like dried off a little bit. So I can feel my llama and a lot of this painting right now, because this paint dries actually pretty fast. A lot of this painting is already dried. So this is the perfect time to start working with our little brush and doing our little black accents. Okay, so I've almost got all these decorations on the baby llama's background. So close. Okay, all right, so I've got my, my decorations in the background and I'm gonna wipe off my brush before I start with black. Now, with black, if you guys are gonna do this with um, paint, you're gonna wanna make sure that your brush is, is pretty clean and you're using your very, very small pointed brush. Now, I will say, some people get stressed out about this part, um, doing the black um, outlines and eyelashes and stuff. I'll tell you a little secret. So, if you let these paintings dry like an hour, you don't have to do the outlines and the eyes and everything with black paint. You can actually, if you let the paint completely dry, you can do the outlines and the eyelashes with Sharpie. But, if you try to use a Sharpie on wet paint, it's not gonna work and it's just gonna ruin your Sharpie. So, you would have to set these aside until they're completely dry and then you could do all the same stuff I'm doing with black paint, you can do with Sharpie and it would be just fine. So, I like to at least, with my paint, I do like to at least put the eyes back on because those are pretty big. So, like, that, that's not so hard to do with black paint. Now, um, again, I've been painting a very, very, very long time since I was like a baby. So I, I have no problem doing outlines with black paint. So sometimes when I'm doing outlines, I'll, I'll put like my, my pinky down a little bit and steady my hand and then I'll get these little eyelashes on like that. Um, I also like to put like my mouth back on like this so you can see the mouth. But again, if you guys are nervous doing this part, don't do it with paint. You guys can do it with Sharpie, that's fine. Um, another thing sometimes I'll do with paint, um, just to make like them stand out a little bit more against the background. Here, let me finish, finish this eye really quick and then I'll show you. I sometimes do an outline on the outside of their body um, and make it look fluffy with black. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Hold on, let me get these little eyelashes on. Okay, all right, so we got our little eyelashes. Okay, so sometimes with the outline of the body, I will like, when you outline, that you can outline like the ears and everything, you know, like this, and these are pretty smooth. So I don't think llama's ears are as fluffy as their body, so I'm making them like just like a smooth line like this. 
Um, but when you get down to this part, llamas are kind of fluffy. So sometimes I like to do this kind of like where I do this, like I just do little brush strokes. I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera, but I'm just kind of like doing these little brush strokes. It makes it just look fluffy and you don't even have to get it everywhere. Like I'm just like pretty loose with it. Uh, so I'm like really smooth with my ears like this. But then like maybe on the top of the head there might be a little bit of hair. So I'm like, you know, just doing some little brush strokes. And the same thing down here. So now I get down to here. I can just kind of like do these little brush strokes. Makes it look like a fluffy llama. And they are fluffy. Like that. But again, now mine, because I've been pausing this video as I've been teaching it, so my llama is, is really, really dry. So my, my llama is very, very dry right now. So I could take, I'm gonna show you, now you guys will wanna wait until this is really, really dry, like mine is, but you can take your Sharpie, look, and just put your necklaces back on, like any of this stuff. Like see how easy that, and I just painted this gray, so I can't, I don't want to Sharpie over that, but just to show you. Now, ideally you would wait much longer than I have, but see how easy this is? And no one will be able to tell that's not paint. All right guys, this is the end of our video. Thank you so much for painting with us tonight. I know that we've been doing these mom and me's in person for a long time, for several years, um, but it is fun to do it in this format. And it is kind of nice that you guys can pause it and go at your own pace. So thank you again so much for joining me today. Again, if you want to share these paintings with us, we would love to see them. You can use the hashtag CWE paint with me on social media or tag paint it kids. Thanks again. See you next time.